Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I am here with uh, the best books in the category of fiction, general fiction that I read in 2021. Um, I don't know if you can see her, but Lady has decided to make an appearance in this video because she wants to sit on my lap so you might or might not be able to see her but um so i've been doing these uh kind of wrap up videos of the year throughout january and i did um the romance category historical fiction um and what else did i do others <laughs> uh, but this is the my list of favorite books i read in 2021 that are just kind of in the general fiction category they're in no particular order and it doesn't mean that I read these books, sorry, it doesn't mean that these books came out in 2021, just that I read them in 2021. So let's get started with the first on my list, which is Circe by Madeline Miller. I had the opportunity to read this book with a good friend of mine who lives um, in the East Coast, and it was just so nice to reconnect with one of my best friends ever. And we both really, really enjoyed Circe. Circe is the story of this godlike figure who is having a lot of t having a really hard time um kind of interacting with the gods she doesn't have any powers herself uh, she's not particularly beautiful there's nothing that really stands out about cersei in the heavenly world um, and so she's just trying to figure out what what it is where she stands in in this order how how to be around her family um and a family that's like super special she commits this major, major faux pas, something kind of illegal, gets sent to Earth. Uh, and so we just slowly follow her journey and she is both a larger than life character and also extremely relatable, kind of batshit at times, super emotional at others and relatable. And like, it was just an epic story that was very much about female empowerment um, in some ways, um, but there are content warnings here that are content warnings for like sexual assault and violence um, and death But it was a story that just like it was fun to read. It was really Interesting intellectually and I just really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed reading this with one of my best friends ever so that contributed to, to the enjoyment as well but um, Yeah, just really good book Next on my list is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. And P. Jelly Clark is the pen name of a historian. And this is why I think I am so like, drawn to the work he does. These are works of speculative fiction and they tend to be short um, novella uh, like length um, stories. And Ring Shout is set in the period of like the KKK in the American South in which the KKK is not just humans doing really evil things, it's actually evil spirits involved. And our main character is somebody who can fight these, fight them. And so it's using history in this really like fantastical, amazing way to comment on history, to comment on our society. And I just really enjoyed Ring Shout. It was kind of scary. Um, violent so content warnings for 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 violence for racism um uh for all of that but i was just so amazed by what p jelly clark did here that i need to read more like i need to read all of his writing i have a few of his books up here um on my physical tbr shelf i just i need to keep reading um i just need to keep reading his work yeah, and I think there's no real higher praise that a reader can give an author other than I loved your book and I need to read more. <laughs> the next book on my list is uh, The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. So we go into reading uh, kind of an older author since passed away. So this is a bit of a classic. And The Woman Destroyed is a book with many short stories in it following the lives of older women, like women whose children are grown up, they're adults, they have left the nest or, you know, are leaving the nest. And in each story, we see how this impacts a, a woman, how her the relationship with her male partner has changed, how the relationship with the children has changed, how the relationship with friends and society has changed, given where she is in life and her age. 
a lot of the stories are really really relatable there was one though that was totally not relatable because like this woman's not a nice person <laughs> like i was like oh i really hate her but her story and what she's going through is actually relatable and it ended up connecting with her on that level even though i thought she was some kind of shitty person and uh, so so some of the stories are, are kind of ha offer a positive outlook but many of them not necessarily give a positive outlook of what women's lives ends up being uh, in this like older age anyway super fascinating really interesting commentary about motherhood um, and uh, womanhood um, in society uh, and I just really enjoyed it the next book on my list was a book that I buddy read with Shannon. Her, her channel is That So Po, and I'll make sure and link that link her down below. This is Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. And it's a short book, but a really fascinating book. So it's based on something very real. It's about the immigrant experience from Mexico to the United States, even though those are not countries that are always explicitly discussed. It's clear that that's what we're talking about here. Um, but it's also more fantastical in this world um, once you leave to this northern region you kind of end up disappearing and there's a disconnect between the people that end up there in what is the US and the family that's left back in Mexico uh, so there's a there's been a death in the family and this um, our main character has to go up north to find her brother she that's her main goal go up north find her find her brother and so she makes this journey and we end up going with her as she's making this journey from the process of leaving her her village town to crossing the border to being in the united states and herrera offers such sharp critique and analysis of the entire journey of, of both the people the culture like everything it was just really really it's such a good book and I really really enjoyed reading this um, with Shannon so thank you Shannon the next book on my list is Pet by Akweke Messi so this is a book that um, is really a, it's a children's book it's meant for children but in this story the our main child uh, the child our main character lives in a society in which bad things have been done away with there's been a big kind of war conflict and um, all evil and badness has been destroyed. Um, she enters her mom's um, studio, art studio, and she sees the picture of this monster, um, and she accidentally brings it to life. <laughs> the monster comes into the real world and tears, tells our main character that there is still evil in this world. It's hiding out, and it lives in her best friend's and now the child has to make a decision about whether she's going to help the monster eradicate this evil or not. And so it has a lot to do with what we label evil, but evil we can see and the evil we cannot see in society. And it's, it's, it's simplistic in some ways because it's meant as a children's story, but there's layers of meaning here and... Um, I just really enjoyed it. Like, I really enjoyed it. Um, Quickie Messi um, has written a prequel to this based on the main character's mother in here, and I'm so excited to read that. Uh, this is one of those kind of like middle grade books that I really recommend for anybody at any age, I think, can read it. I don't know if you'll like it as much as I did, but I'm like, you can get something for it and from it. And I just really, really enjoyed reading that. It's a short read, really quick, but it's got a lot of interesting layers. The next book on my list is one of the few young adult books I read this year. I have not been reading a lot of young adult recently, but this is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. And in this story, we follow a trans main character, a boy, uh, who comes from a witch family, a family of brujos, so, and brujos have specific kind of powers, and they go through a specific ritual. Um, to, in order to access that power but because he is trans he hasn't been allowed to practice this ritual and be inducted into the family magic um, he has lost his mother 
and so he, he's dealing with the loss of a parent and also not being accepted by his father for who he is um, he does have a few people in his life that really do accept him but he still feels like a void when you know when his father does not accept him um, and then at school there's all kinds of interesting things going on as well but anyways let, let me finish out the plot so so he our boy wants to be inducted into <laughs> into the the family magic and he ends up performing the ritual on his own with his cousin something goes wrong though something goes wrong he was trying to communicate with the spirit of his dead cousin and instead brings back the spirit of a dead classmate and this dead classmate says i will not help you find your cousin unless you help me kind of finish up the things i need to do um so it's a story where you get a lot of uh, elements of found family of um, you know marginalized kids and the communities that they form in order to support each other when adults are not there to support them and also going through what it means to be rejected by your family um, and uh, left out of something that is deeply important in your culture and in your family like the magic is in um, for the family and cemetery boys I loved it I it was just it was fun there's a mystery there's murder there's it's so much so many layers and just an interesting story overall I liked following the characters and seeing them grow uh, and so I uh, like I will look for for um, anything else that Aiden Thomas writes because I thought this was just so well done the next book on my list will not come as a surprise to anyone that I'm including here, but it is Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I did a dedicated review to this book that I will link down in the comments sec I'm sorry, in the description um, box if you're interested in, in it. But Velvet Was the Night is essentially the story of two people uh, in, their, in their 20s in Mexico City in the 1970s. Uh, one is a girl who's just like going about her day kind of underachieving she has a job as a secretary doesn't really love her job but doesn't also feel like doing more and then um, Elvis our hero in the story here who's not much of a hero here because he's a thug that goes around beating up student protesters for the government he's part of the secret government group that attacks protesters and then things go crazy, things go down that bring them together, bring their lives together, even though we don't really see the characters, these two characters interact for most of the story. It's mostly about the way in which the political situation is affecting these two people, how they're gonna be brought together and then end up at a resolution. I love this so much as a historian, as a big fan of Celia Moreno Garcia. When she writes noir, I think she is really in her best um, in writing. Like her noir stories are the ones that that um, that I loved the most. Uh, this book has all of that in there, and I just really, really enjoyed it and really loved it. And it's really great to see a Mexican Canadian author um, be successful. The next book on my list is *The Stone Weta* by Octavia Cade, and this was one of those works of speculative fiction that I read, and like I'm not sure I fully understood all of it, but I think that's okay. <laughs> I think that's okay. Yeah, I still really enjoyed it. This this is a book that starts like it gives you information about different in insects and different animals at the same time the story of the humans is interwoven in there um, and there's a bit of a murder mystery happening you start off by following a scientist and and data that's been missing. it's climate science data that's been missing and it seems to be part of a global conspiracy to eliminate this data um, but the scientist knows this data is missing and is trying to preserve as much of this data as possible. And each chapter is told from the perspective of a different animal and a different person as you figure out what this world is and what's happening and this mystery unravels. I'm not sure if my description is doing it justice because it's just... It was, it was a really cool, really interesting book. If you're into reading speculative fiction at all, you need to pick up this book. Like, that's it. Pick it up. Um, and, and know that you're going to be really confused for, like, a chapter or two. 
<laughs> and that's okay because each chapter begins through like the point of view of an animal and then it shifts into the point of view of the human and that line of when the shift occurs um like there's nothing visibly telling you a shift has occurred in perspective here you kind of figure it out um and that was actually really brilliantly done but it ends up being confusing at first then once you figure that out though it's it's really cool really really cool book and then last on my list is probably my favorite book that I read in 2021 and that was Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. So Fernanda Melchor is a Mexican writer and this is a really hard-hitting story uh, that begins with the death of a witch in a village in Mexico, somewhere in Mexico. And each chapter is told from the perspective of a different character, somebody living in this village. And through each person, you are told more of what happened. You get more of the story of what happened. And what you end up learning is all the secrets, distru distrust, um, envy, all the malicious things that are rotting this community. Um, and you get that through through each perspective little by little learning bits bits and pieces more there are parts in here that are extremely hard to read there is sexual assault uh, there is um, violence against lgbtqia characters there is pedophilia there is homophobia there is like oh a lot of really bad things happening in this story but it's also a really complex story because you see the points of view of each character and you're slowly figuring out what's happening. It was just such a brilliant, brilliant book. I think more people need to read this book. Um, like, how had I not heard about this book before? Um, it was just so amazing. I mean, I, I want to like send my parents a copy of, these of this book. I just... It's really amazing if you can handle some of the really heavy topics that this book engages with it's worth it and it's not a long book but it is a really hard book to get through because of the uh, the content here uh, as somebody whose family comes from a small village in the middle of nowhere Mexico um, it also rang very true um, I, it's not where I grew up but it's where my parents grew up and so I've you know I've been to 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 my parents village village i spent months at a time there i you know i i'm very interested whenever my parents talk about their experience and a lot of it rang true to what my parents have spoken to me about small village life um and yeah just amazing and i really do think that this is my favorite book of 2021 there's a few others that that were just really really good um the fastest way to fall by um Denise Williams was really good. Pachinko is extremely good. Like, but I think that my favorite book is Hurricane Season. And I think, again, if you can handle the content, I highly, highly recommend it. So that is it. I am officially done wrapping up all of my favorite books of 2021. I might have one more video coming up of the my least favorite books or more disappointing books of 2021. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with that video or if I'm going to do that video. Uh, but if you're interested, um, make sure that you follow my channel for, for more videos. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you can, let me know what your favorite book of 2021 is like are you able to narrow it down to just one book like if you really have to can you narrow it down to one because i found it really hard and yet also very like yeah i think it's this book hands down <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye